have to play around with um, with customize a little bit as well. But yeah, we've got to we've actually done it as well. So we have a poly and a mono um, and a mono sorry to to show you if, if you want. Yeah, I think, I think that last time. Um, last time you uh, two weeks ago you showed me uh, the matrix piece with um, the poly repo. And mm -hmm. I posed the question of how do we handle the mono repo? I mean, okay. the, the poly repos and not a mono repo. And um, uh, Amit was going to um, look into that, how uh, to handle that. Because there's a question of in the matrix, if you could put multiple Git repos in as uh, sources for the, at the matrix level, or if you, you had can. to do multiple matrixes, one for every repo. I yeah, can't. I think we can try that right now. Um, I'll share my screen. I think um, I'm just I'll, I'll get another project because I don't want to expose IPs and stuff on the meeting. But uh, I have a personal one that I it's my little sandbox that I play around with. Yeah, it works. Let me uh, bring that up. So we can also just have multiple application sets as well. Um, or we can have the array of matrix, um, the generator. Let me, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's look at, uh, applications here. Okay, this is, so this is just a, uh, let me quickly show you what this actually uh, does. Um, just gonna quickly get the password. So th this is just a really simple. Uh, essentially, what it does is it. Um, deploys my external DNS cert manager. Uh, I'll just get the password. I've got to go into the console and get it. No problem. I'll, I'll give you this to look over as I, I'll, I'll talk as I'm doing it. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of remember how it was working, so. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, I remember the matrix piece from last time would go through and scan the different directories um, like your DB, DNS, and observability pass um, for to kind of apply values to those uh, different paths based on uh, your template from, from what I remember. Is that correct? Mm. Yeah, correct, yeah. So um, if I had nested folders as well, you simply go like that as well, and that will go and search through it. Um, we actually did one at the GitHub organization level, so it can actually go even further and scan all of your repositories in the in the Git um, that have a specific naming convention that contain Helm charts, and then it will just go scoop them up from there, which is also really, really cool. Um, I'm just going to find the... Let me find the other one where we did... Uh, just one repository. I'll just take the IP out. So this one, this one here is using the different provider. So on the other one, we're using list and list and get. Um, this one we use the SCM provider. This will go to organization, um, obviously cloud similar to Ortelius, gets the, the secret name and then filters any anything, any repository we have in that organization. Yeah. It will look for any chart and then do it as well. So, so that, that's awesome. That that will definitely. Now, let's say you have you just want to do five out of the ten repos in the organization. 
Um, is there, is, is the filter um, also, can you filter on the repo name? I and, think so, yes. I, I, I don't, uh, I can't. I can't answer that question today, but I will, I will make that as action item. Um, Emmett will definitely know the answer to that, but um, let's, let's, we can probably just see it. I think I have it. Um, I would imagine so. Here's the application set. Oh, I'll send it to you as well. Yeah. Oh, what is it there? So, yeah. Let's, There's let's, list. I mean, in, in short, yes, because we can, our naming conventions, we could change. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could do it on a naming convention. Yeah, but um, I'm sure there's more filters as well. This and is, that, this and is that was under the, the GitHub SCM provider? Correct. Um, it's quite new. So, so we're working from dev branch. Um, we have our own custom implementation of it, of Argo. Um, but in short, yes, you can. Um, and if we do need other filter capabilities, we can simply make a ticket or just build it into Argo ourselves. Right. So we can contribute to that to get it to what we want it to do. And, and that's a cool thing about open source, right? Because we can. Exactly. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Uh, um, here, somebody posted it. Oh, okay. Um, let me drop it in the chat. I didn't get a chance to look. So you're off this week, are you? On holiday? Yeah, I have uh, some family in town. Oh, okay, cool. So they're out, uh, Tracy and my niece are out uh, riding horses right now. So, oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, we have, um, where we live, it's real rural. So literally just go out the front door and go in any direction and you don't run into anything for miles. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> so that's why with COVID for us is, uh, you know, we're so remote. It's, it's only when we need to go to the grocery store or something like that, we we yeah have to take our precautions hmm. it looks like it looks like it was applied because the if that issue i um dropped in the chat um looks like it was applied let me look at the pull request It's very uh, pretty recent. Okay. Right. Um, it was merged only five commits ago into the Argo Project Master. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're pulling from from Master. I think the release, the new release comes out soon. I think I think it's version something two or something. I'm not, I'm not quite following the numbers, but. Right. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if the, it, it's definitely uh, looks like it's applied to the, um, like the CLI level, but I don't know if it was how it was applied to the um, YAML so file. The, yeah, okay. We generally don't use the CLI. Um, right. We, when we used app of apps, we would use CLI as a workaround for projects and stuff because we, we use a GitOps model to actually provision Argo itself. Um, right. And then, uh, well, for example, we use Helm file to sync, you know, to bootstrap our cluster. And then we, we need Argo needs external DNS cert manager. And then after, Argo is implemented, it takes over those apps that were bootstrapped to start off with, if that makes sense. Right, yep, yep, definitely. Um, so we haven't really used the CLI, but hope, I, I would imagine it's the same sort of, I mean, if you can do it through the CLI, I would imagine all that does is talks to the inside Kubernetes anyway. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it looks like they implemented a bunch of stuff. Uh, and I think it's just going to be. We would have to extend application query with a string type for repo. So I think the filter name may be repo. OK. Where, where do you see, see that? I can't see. Um, let me share my screen real quick. OK, sure. Oh, you got it right there. Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. Go, uh, go, 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 go jump back. Yeah. So right there, right where your cursor is. Uh, right below the text uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so they're changing that to add filter by repo. Okay. Yeah, so it looks like it's either going to be repo or if you scroll up a little bit, um, see the select spec there under motivation? It could be repo URL. So that that's kind of looks like how they uh, kind of implemented it. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see a lot of workarounds to, to get the desired outcome. Um, but it's good, so it's good to know that there that it's it may not be right out of the box today, but being able to support a poly repo um, and do it that way will definitely make things uh, organization uh, a lot easier. Uh, yeah. instead of having to duplicate Helm charts in multiple repos. So your app of app repo plus your microservice repo. Yeah, application sets are so much better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think um, we always want to stay as close to the dev branch as we can. So mm -hmm. if we do need to make changes like this, we can influence the development of it as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it looks like um, we're, we're, we're getting to a point where these capabilities will solve, well, we can use Argo to solve the problems that we want to. Exactly. So the next step is to think about, um, have, you, have you played with the, the Argo CLI at all, or just for the um, install of Argo itself? Or? Yeah, so we, so we have it, um, if you go down the bottom of our, um, our pipeline, this is just a uh, Azure DevOps pipeline. We have it, we, we use um, GitHub Actions, but this is yeah. just a AKS one. Um, it, it, here we're downloading the CLI. And then I'm just, I'm simply adding the cluster to Argo. Got it. And then um, applying the application to that. Right. So, and then, so that, yeah. um, that apply is applying Argo itself to the cluster. No. So that's applying the application set. Argo is already done. So. Oh, okay. So you're, um, you're applying the applications. That's a dev application set. Um, uh, yeah. CRD. Yeah, uh, that's we do that before actually. So um, let, let's look at that actually. Uh, uh, where is that? Let's look here. Argo CD. Because I remember Ahmed talking about that. Yeah, no, we have it. Uh, let me find it. It might be in another repository. It should almost be. So cluster issue. This is the app project. Um, let me open the other. Actually, it might be. Just give me a second to find it. Uh, I think maybe in the DNS infra. No. Shouldn't be in there. I think it's the, we've got a CIC. Let me just find it on the other. Um, I'm just being careful here. Just I don't want to expose too much on the recorded. Um, no problem. Uh, if it's too hard to show, don't worry about it. We we know it's out no, there, no. and we know that we can. Uh, what we need to do to get it there, get it in place. Yeah, it, it, it's very interesting. Um, give, just give me a couple of minutes, and if I can't find it in a couple of minutes, so. Well. 
project before. Now, where is it? Um, here it is. Yeah, okay, cool. I've got it here. Cool. So it's we call it Argo City Application Set dash CRDs. Um, ah. And let's look at it here. That's right. So this is. Um, does, do you mind if it's, it has no color, or would you? No, that, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, so custom resource definition. Yeah. Um, and then. So, and, th and this gets applied after you get your Argo up and running, right? Um, yeah, so we, what, what we do is like, like I, was, I was actually hoping we can do this to the Ortelius Azure, because um, what I can do is we have a in the Otelius GitHub organization. I'd like to put this start putting this code into that actual repo, and then we could start bootstrapping the cluster with that Helm file as well. So yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. if we if we could put um, take this, put it into the Azure cluster, then we can. Um, because we we have uh, the monolith and I think five or six microservices that we need to um, work with right now um, mm -hmm. that are coming out of the service catalog. Um, and I think that'd be a perfect fit. And those are all in all the microservices. So we'll have like six or seven repos that we need to look across to deploy over into the Azure cluster. Sure, yep, we can do that. Um... Yeah, so what you, you use, uh, what's the ingress you use? The... Um, right now, we're probably going to do uh, Nginx ingress uh, behind okay. behind the Azure load balancer. Yeah, okay. Um, we, we have all the code. I have the code for that as well. I actually have um, Terraform code for the whole infrastructure provisioning as well. Um, and then if we want to do play around with multi-region clusters, I have um, the Azure front door connect as the global um, load balancer. If we want to start going crazy, that, that'll be obviously be down the line, but yeah. um, I imagine we'll have to do that one way or another. Yeah, I think right now we're running everything in US East. Yep, okay. Uh, it's just the cheapest re region right now for what yeah. we're doing. You know, I, even I run my um, stuff in, I think, US West. Um, yeah. Because it's, yeah, obviously way cheaper in the States opposed to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's way down the line anyway, the, the multi region stuff. But yeah, okay. So we can, we can start to build. It would be cool even to um, have a couple of use cases, like even the Ortelius docs or something, or, or we can pick a small we can do a bit of a proof of concept with it and start um, collaborating on the code together. Yeah. And then you can do some like pull requests. Yeah, exactly. So the um, what we'll need to do is uh, document how since we're we're working so close to the dev branch for Argo, um, document what uh how basically how to install argo and apply all the 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 updates that we need um like the, mm -hmm. the application set crd it looked like ahmed had another uh thing around i can't remember in the notes um something else that he ran into that he had a he had a uh find a workaround for um yeah um that was for what was for it was it the secrets spaces. it was for names races um Yeah, because we we can um, we can document it, and then also like our, our setup is fully automated, um, so I could destroy this today, and then uh, I could even del delete the cluster, and it's 
press the button, it's back up again. Yeah, and if you if you have it fully automated, and if you want to share that automation, we can um, uh, get that. Like you said, do a couple PRs and push it into the uh, one of our repos, um, and then we can do the automation against the Ortilius Kubernetes uh, um, Azure cluster, and mm -hmm. that will be a good good way to to have Argo a way for people to get Argo up and running. Um, with all the necessary pieces. And then um, we can then use, create a, an, like an app of apps or application set to go ahead and install Ortelius, the monolith plus the five microservices into the, the cluster through uh, uh, the application set. That would be milestone one, I think. I think that yep. would be awesome. Yeah, that would be really cool. I, I think that's a good milestone to shoot for. Yeah. I, yeah, that would be our first milestone. Um, yeah, and I don't see a problem with that. That would be, we can make a video out of it and a lot of people would be interested in that, I think. Yeah, and then um, then kind of kind of in parallel, well, it could be in parallel. It just depends on you know, how, how crazy you want to stay up all night, um, is to start looking at the the user interface from Ortelius into Argo, um, what we want to do from that standpoint, um, how we want to drive uh, the deployment process or uh, you know, keep track of what's happening from the deployment uh, perspective. Mm, I'm almost thinking, so we're, you're talking about having Ortelius UI and then simply interacting with Argo to do operations? Um, either either interacting, well, it, uh, Ortelius may interact indirectly with Argo through uh, a PR. Hmm. So let's say out of, out of the build process, um, we get two new um, microservices that we need to update. Um, what ends up happening in the pipeline process, we get a new application version in the Ortelia side, but it's a, it's it represents the a new version of the application with those two new versions of the microservices, um, plus all the old ones. And then from there, um, it hasn't deployed yet. Um, we can then um, have Ortelius do the deployment and in which it would actually go ahead and uh, create a PR with the app of app repo um, saying this is these are the new uh, image tags I want you to apply um, to the cluster. And then mm -hmm. once we do that commit and the PR gets merged, then or uh, Argo takes off and does all the work for us. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm we thinking. All, I don't know if that makes sense. Do, no, it does. Like you almost can cut Argo out and just have Ortelius um, interact with the Git repo. And Argo's constantly polling it anyway in the configuration. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I mean, um, Ortelius doesn't talk directly to Argo, but it talks yeah. to Argo through the Git repo. Yeah, through the yeah, and it's better that way because we don't have another layer of abstraction for no reason, and we're following. If tomorrow we want to go away from Argo, we're still using GitOps paradigm, where therefore other GitOps tools will have to confined to you know somewhat close to that exactly exactly yeah okay yeah that 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 sounds good that that's quite awesome actually the only thing that it, um the, the the weird thing for me around GitOps is um the pr process i know it's there as a gatekeeper but it sure seems to slow everything down yeah well i'm i'm actually playing around with Kipton at the moment. So yeah. I'm, I'm sort of, I, I don't know much about it yet, but I'm, I'm learning that it looks like maybe that is quite cool in terms of gatekeeping by you define your SLOs and then it, it's sort of automated gatekeeping as well. So I, I don't, I, I can't really talk about it at the moment because I'm not sure, but maybe I might by next couple of weeks have some sort of ideas around that. Yeah. Yeah. If there's, you, you know, it would be nice, nice because right now I see the the, the PR as the bottleneck um, for 
a, a continuous deployment process where you're literally checking in code. Um, it's being tracked all the way through the Git repo and everything like that, but then it's it, you know it moves out to production basically on it without any human in, interaction. You know, once mm. once the developer says it's good to go. So yeah. it can, there's pros and cons. I mean, it's quite scary sometimes because the developers are sometimes, well, a lot of them are not smart people and they can do a lot of errors as well. Well, let's put it as maybe it would not necessarily go to production, but go to um, the QA uh, cluster automatically or the QA environment uh, mm -hmm. automatically at that level. And then you get, you run through your test cases, your automated test cases. And then after that's happy, then you, I don't know, that's where um, the wheels kind of fall off the cart for me on the process is on the GitOps side, do you then move that to a different branch or retag it? You know, you know, how's the life cycle represented in the GitOps world? I think we won't, like, I won't know that answer until we play around with it more. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, that's why we need to get this this pock up or, or yeah. Yeah, so I think the, um, like you said, milestone one would be, uh, let's get uh, Argo uh, installed into the Ortelius Azure cluster. Um, and yeah. then we'll also get the, um, the five microservices plus the monolith uh, deploying through Argo. Uh, into Azure. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that sounds good. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to Sergio because he he manually installed Argo. I'll just ask him, uh, you know, do you have any work in there that you need to persist or whatever? And then if it's okay with him, I'll just uh, blow that out, and then I'll we'll do the automated pipeline to to put it in. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds like a uh, a good next step. This is mm -hmm. looking. This is looking really good. I, I, uh, what you guys have found for through the research is amazing because uh, I know yeah. a lot of the questions that I've been posing. There's hard to find any answers to out there. You have to go deep into the dev, yeah, to to actually. And and hats off to Emmett. Like he he's had some long nights failing, failing, failing to understand. And I've been lucky because he teaches me, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. he's done some great work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's a, it's an interesting space. Um, and it's, you know, I can see the, I, I totally see the benefits, but also I see some of the bottlenecks. Um, and I yeah. think or Ortelius and like, I think like like I said, Ortelius and maybe like you said, kept in with some of the automated gatekeeping and some of that stuff is going to, it looks like it's going to be a combination of things that are going to make it actually work, you know, pretty mm. seamless from end to end. Yeah. Especially and, at um, scale. Yeah. And that, <laughs> no one has the experience at scale, do they? But they, they conceptually talk about these things, but. I, I'm yet to see someone actually really go and actually do it, which is going to be really awesome. Yeah, because um, yeah. what we've seen for on the microservices side, most people are managing them basically like on a Google spreadsheet up to like 20 or 30 microservices. And then oh, after yeah. that, they can't keep track anymore. And, it, and it, it's just not possible. And that's like what Sasha's yeah. running into. Um, okay in his world is is just keeping track of what's where that's and you throw and you throw a pipeline at it you know you throw a four stage pipeline at it and then you just multiply your number of ver possible versions by four that you have to keep track yeah. of wh what's where i think uh uh Emmett, uh just message with him must have forgot he, he'll come in we're probably running out of time so i don't know it's still gonna be it yeah, if he wants to join in, if not, we can catch him up yeah. next time. Yeah, um, I've got a, a clear vision of what we need to do. I'll, I'll need to get the list of, should we perhaps make a ticket or issue in our project and then we can get some acceptance criteria around it and then. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and make a, um, 
uh, uh, issue and associated to the GitOps project. And um, yeah, just make yeah. it off of this, the main repo. Okay, yeah. And I may move some of your issues over. Um, uh, yeah, I think we- It's, we it's no big team. deal. Yeah. Yeah, the only, the only reason why I put um, everything in a single repo, it makes it easier it makes for, for new people to find something to work on. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, just put yeah. GitOps in front of it, it like GitOps colon, yeah. and then we'll um, uh, uh, add add a, a um, Argo CT to Azure cluster. And just put in there, no, uh, just uh, talk to Sergio about blowing away old version. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just quickly write his, uh, what's his handle? It's like four. Uh, yeah. At four Saker. Let me see. Yeah, just, just to. Oh, it may have popped up. Nah, uh, I don't, I mustn't have him as a, I don't know. I'll, I'll just, I'll yeah, just know, we know who he is. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll we, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We don't need to be too crazy. Uh, talk to Sujit about uh... and then okay. just to add in, just to add in, um, going planning to install from automated scripts or whatever you're calling them. Yeah. Yeah, so, so make gonna... make that an issue, then we'll create a, a second issue for um, uh, installing Ortelius with Argo. Yeah, this is quite exciting. Yeah, I think you guys have a really good handle up, you know, on what we need to, um, you know, move things along and. Hmm. I hope, yeah, I hope after we make this milestone, we might get a bit more traction to make this group a little bit bigger as well, if we can find the right people. Yeah, I think part of it is um, we're just running into a time zone issue with India. Yeah. Um, you, you, yeah, I mean, you mean we want to have people from India contributing, but they can't make this time. Yeah. Cause it's like or real early in the morning. Like, yeah. Cause, cause I can move, like um, I can just report back to you if we want to, I can run them at nighttime here and then that's Indian time. And then I can just report back to you on, on the outcomes and action. Yeah. If, if you want to, um, we'll, we'll well, let's get this milestone out there. I'll reach out to some of the, and we're wrapping up the service catalog piece. Um, we're going into uh, testing hopefully next week uh, and documentation uh, is the plan to hit that next week. Um, so that's going to be wrapping up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I guess uh, these will, are these are these Helm files are these customized yeah. are they? Yeah, we have Helm files. We'll just need to make sure um, just put in there review Helm files for um, Argo implementation. Mm -hmm. um, And we'll need a uh, application set and a matrix created. Hey, hey guys, sorry. Uh, oh, no worries. I'm still under oh, the weather from the vaccine. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll give you like a two minute uh, update of what we talked about. 
Um, so we reviewed application sets um, as well of, of what, what we've done. Um, we're now talking about removing Sergio's um, Argo from the AKS cluster on the Ortelius uh, subscription. And then we're gonna do an automated way of getting Argo City into Ortelius at the cluster. And then we're gonna actually install all the Ortelius um, application using Argo. So we're just making a few tickets for that as well. Yeah, so the uh, the new version, the service catalog version of uh, Ortelius, um, we're going to have the monolith plus, um, I think, five or six microservices and probably like a Nginx um, ingress uh, as part of that that we'll want to um, install using uh, Argo. And th that's a poly repo type of um, setup. Yeah, we have the code as well to, um, so we'll have Eng Nginx, but then we'll have the separate load balancer uh, entry point for Argo. Because um, yep. I, I did that research regarding you don't want to go through Ingress because then if your Ingress fails, you don't have a wait. Well, you, you can't fix you could, it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, technically you could um, port for the service to your local or whatever, but I mean, it's not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Nginx oh. Ingress. Um, we have the, the monolith plus, uh, uh, I think it's like five, um, five or six microservices. Yeah. Yeah, and those are in, everything is in a poly repo uh, setup. Yeah, so we have completed poly repo as well uh, for application set. Um, there's just a specific, format for it, which I've shown Brad. Yeah, we were looking at that earlier, and I, I posed the, the question to Brad about filtering uh, repos at the GitHub organization level, and we found a um, an, an issue on the Argo side that uh, addresses it. But it looked like it was at the CLI level, but it must be, I didn't go into the, the Golang code yet to look at how it was being picked up from the uh, YAML file. But I'm sure that it's gonna be the same implementation on the back end. Yeah, yeah. generally it is, but I'll, I'll check it out to and let you all know whether there's a filter. So I know there's a filter in place for monorepo, uh, there is certain, there is one type of filter for poly repos, as long as you have different folder structures, rather than uh, changing the entire repository name and filtering by repository names, you can have a separate folder structure and only read those repos which have that folder structure. So for example, in 50% of your repos, you can call the folder chart and configure that into your poly repo setup of Argo and right. only read those setups. So that is one solution uh, before they come up with a fix for this. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we were speculating. There's a, a, a lot of different ways to do the filtering. Um, but yeah, that's awesome what you found on the, the poly repo. It's going to be a big, big help in um, bringing Ortelius to uh, the picture. And, um, uh, and I don't know if you caught it when um, if you jumped on yet, but um, the tentative proposal that or design that we're kind of kicking around is uh, so out of the CI CD process, let's say you get two new um, uh, containers, uh, new images that were created. Uh, on the Ortelia side, that's a new version of the application. And Ortelius then would interact with the Git repo to update, like, for example, the image uh, tag uh, in the app of app repo saying, this is the new values I want you to apply for uh, to the cluster. And then um, Ortelius uh, would be interacting with GitHub or Git 
uh, probably creating a PR or doing something like that. And then once the PR has been merged, um, Argo would take over and do all the heavy lifting from there. Yeah. So this is for Argo events, if I'm not mistaken, right? You Ar Argo, Argo events come on the back end. So the Argo events come into play when Argo completes the uh, deployment. Then we know that um, we can record it on the Ortelia side saying this is the deployment. The deployment of this version of the application finally happened. Okay. Um, sorry. Could you repeat this then? So, Maybe I got confused. So one's the front end piece. So... The front end piece is saying, I have a new version of the application. I want you to deploy to uh, the QA cluster, for example. Mm -hmm. In that in that new version that we're, uh, that we're sending out, there's two new microservices and there's 10 old ones. So I'm going to go ahead from the Artelia side and update the, the uh, manifest files uh, with the new image tag. And I'm going to go ahead and do my push and my PR um, with the new values file. Um, right. So from there, that's that's just Ortelius interacting with uh, with Git and GitHub to do the the PR process. Once yeah. the once somebody comes in and merges that PR, then Argo takes over and um, and rolls that out to the QA uh, environment for me. Correct. Uh, one other question I'll have is ideally, shouldn't this PR be conducted on a dev environment rather than a QA? Like general flow of practice would be on dev, you create your PRs, etc. You merge it into dev. So now whatever you have in master gets deployed on all following environments, which is staging, QA, prod, pre-prod, etc. Uh, yes. Yes, you could. Yeah, I just is using that as an example. Yeah, we could. Okay. You, you merge merge to master, and then from there, um, you would pick up from there. That that was one thing that I wasn't quite sure on how um, an outstanding ish um, understanding for me is how the pipeline is handled in Argo, but. That's down the roads, you know. How how is it's more of an Argo uh, GitOps thing than than anything, you know. How do you handle uh, dev test uh, UAT and production at the repo level? Do you do separate branches? Do you do separate folders? Do you do one one merge like you said to dev, and then you know something else is going to trigger it to go to to QA, and then something else is going to trigger it to go to UAT. Those are the things that. Are it would be nice to understand, but uh, kind of beyond the scope of what Ortelius needs to know about. Correct. So in my head, what I was thinking is for so if you notice, uh, we mentioned the type of branch, which is head or master, etc. Yeah. Within the respective application set. Yeah. So I was thinking that for dev, ideally you would want star uh, feature branches or all the feature branches to get deployed on your dev environment only. So that would mean that dev branch needs a separate application set. Right. And apart from that, all the other environments should be committing only master. So all the other branches will have master. So you don't need to specify for all the other branches, but it's only for dev, you would have to create a separate application set within the cluster. And for all the other branches, you just include them within your a uh, matrix where you mention head and the cluster would have all the different cluster names. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And then where the uh, events, the Argo events come into play is on the back end. So after Argo has been completed, uh, the deployment to the dev cluster, for example, um, uh, we would use that events hook to let uh, Ortelius know that this application version has made it to the dev cluster and we can record. Because one of the things we keep track of on the Ortelius side is which environments have which versions of the application. 
So you can have different versions at different stages of the pipeline. And that's where we use the event hook to count, uh, catch back up and let us know what's where, what's running where, basically. Okay. Uh, but that, that's so down on, the road. We don't have to worry about that now. No, I already started playing around with Argo events and deployed it uh, internally. Cool. So the thing with that is, I think Argo events, is the more I read about it, the more I feel Argo events is tightly coupled with Argo workflows. So without the workflows, you can't trigger the events because I created whatever is required by the events, but there's no way to trigger them without the workflow in place. Huh. Yeah. So I meet, I'll, I'll probably do some more reading to just confirm that. But if that turns out to be the case, because even all Argo event examples that are given are all using Argo workflows or some sort of workflow. Right. So I'll, I'll dig more into that over the weekend. And is that even with the the webhook trigger? Yeah, so technically I can deploy the webhook trigger. So there are three components to Argo workflows, right? Let me quickly just pull that up and check. Just hold on a sec. Because I... Mm. Yeah, so there is something called a source, uh, a source, an event box, and a sensor. So the if the source is the webhook, where the source basically would get triggered, and you mention what is the endpoint of the webhook, etc. Yeah. The event bus is the one which will take care of the overall deployment, and finally, it's the sensor which does the end deployment or displays the final result or pushes that thing into your code, et cetera. So that's the last bit. But wherever I'm looking into the examples, they all refer to workflows as a resource. So that's why I have a feeling that it's tightly coupled, uh, which is why I'll, I'll have to do some more research on the Argo events bit over the weekend and let you know whether it's tightly coupled or you can directly just create them. And if you trigger them, then that's fine. Uh, you can trigger them independently of having a workflow in place. Right, right. Now, I remember when I was looking at events that they had a Slack example um, to throw basically after the deployment was finished that it would um, send out a Slack message. Um, so you may... Uh, look into that because that was one of the uh, events I saw or one of the examples I saw uh, on catching a, a deployment completion. Yeah. Okay. And did they have workflows also implemented in that example, which they showed you? I don't remember. I, I okay. honestly don't remember. It was a while ago. Um, so I don't r recall off the top of my head. Okay, I'll, I'll dig into that again and confirm. Uh, awesome. Well, great job, uh, Amit, on uh, all the research you've been doing. It's been a huge help. I think it's, it's, pulling, it's pulling together really nice. Yep, anytime, Matt. So for the five to six microservices, um, can we assign someone to give us more information? Uh, you could put me as a contact for now and I'll, I will okay. get you um, the list. Okay, that's uh, three, four, five. All right. Yeah. Uh, do we have any specific use case for the Argo events where we could actually test it with Ortelius? Because right now I don't have Okay, maybe I could just do the Slack integration for myself and see. Uh, uh, my question. No, uh, to answer your question, no, <laughs> we don't. We don't have uh, the webhook created yet. Okay, I'll, I'll just do a Slack integration and see whether I could integrate arguments into that or a push into a repository. Perfect. We could do like a little GoLang app as well. Um, yeah, yeah that's work. what basically we were, I was going to write. It was basically a Flask um, oh, yeah. 
just because I'm more familiar with Python than Go. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. same thing. It's only a small little app, so yeah. Really yeah. I totally right. agree, Brad. Uh, I was thinking that we could probably write a quick thing where, which basically shows every time we push into the Kubernetes repository, it pushes out onto Slack saying that, you know, we pushed into the repository type of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Maybe so, I can take that piece of work because I've done quite a bit with the chat up space. Um, so here's the one I found, the, the Slack example. I just threw it in chat. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Right. So, uh, bring it to my and I, I have not looked at the how it was implemented or anything like that but that's basically like you said it's a sensor well there's a lambda one interesting yeah a lambda can also trigger uh, so a lambda also would require the web so you have multiple types of sensors you can have a lambda a webhook you can have anything pretty much sks right. service all of those can be sensors that's how they are going to start getting triggered yeah. So the example I was looking to implement was more for uh, webhook, but we could look at other options as well. I think um, for me, oh. the little, I think keeping it inside the cluster is a good option. And we can, because if we want to write to the PostgreSQL as well, the payload, or we want to get certain metadata to update we can sort of kill two birds, one stone. So we almost make like a little interface in between it. And then we have different events going to different um, tasks that we required. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So so I just put another link in there, which is your Golang um, sample. So I'll click on HTTP trigger there, Brad. Yeah. And that's uh, the Golang. If you go scroll down a little bit, you'll see the program. Oh, yeah. That, that's just a yeah, the API, a basic API. Yeah. So I have, I have code I have code for this that I've done recently as well. And if we keep it in the cluster, we don't even need auth around it because Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just just to, to prove it out, I wouldn't even worry about any type of authentication or anything like that for now. No. Well, I don't even think we would need it. Because yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll get a sample of the payload when it comes through and we'll print it out, and that will that will give us more to talk over as well. Yeah. Now, like you, like you're saying, Amit, uh, I don't know if um, how if a workflow is needed or you know what is needed to make this thing actually happen, <laughs> other yeah. than just just deploying the the sensor into the cluster, you know, yeah. or that, that's still a mystery. <laughs> I will update you all. Well, I'll update you all on the next cycle, but uh, I will dig into this over the weekend. Okay. And um, yeah, and and whatever you, you know, no hurry on this one. Um, you know, this, this is down the road, but if you want to take a look at it now versus later, um, we'll eventually need to take a, a dive into it, but whatever works for I your think, schedule. I think we should spike it because at least know what the payload is. Um, and it's not, I don't see this being difficult, uh, not talking about installing it in the cluster, but with the, what is it called? The sensors, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. Um, so in terms of In terms of the code, it's very, very simple. We could even, this could be even a good first issue. Okay. Yeah. Works for me. We could almost, um, if maybe we can get uh, Nevada to do this. Um, um, so I, I actually got her to start working on workflows yesterday. So let's okay, see cool. how she progresses with that. And then okay. if she progresses fine, then we'll hand over this task to her and see how she yeah. performs. So Steve, we're, we're mentoring. Um, we take like a couple of interns just to mentor them. So nice. uh, we can give them like, you know, teach them tasks like this, which is pretty easy. And then, yeah. Okay. That's always always good to have Yeah. some extra, extra hands. You can 
especially when you're you're teaching them something new. Yeah, and this is quite cool, right? Um, little go lane, like it's it's fun. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I I think that's almost the ticket itself then. Perfect. Let's, let's make a ticket. So, are we calling it um, implement sensor? Ob Argo sensor object or whatever. Yeah, it, uh, implement uh, HTTP Argo HTTP sensor. And the uh, the outstanding, so so we can receive an event. See the payload. Receive a payload. Uh, a post deployment. And why don't you throw the link into that uh, page? Sure. We, we can um, we can go over whoever wants to pick this issue up. We can uh, sort of mentor them and go over all of this. Yeah, and then Brad, before you, um, under projects, uh, there on the right. Um, I'll just quickly sorry, I was quite. I'll, I'll write this for the intern because uh, we're teaching her Helm as well. So I'll just put. Uh, Okay, what were you saying, sorry? Um, on the right, under projects. Um, oh, I'll oh, submit this first, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, right there on that page, um, I made a, uh, oh, okay. a GitOps okay. project. So if you go back to, yeah. just go back to issues, it'll be you the first one. Yeah, I can inject them into the project if I click on the project as well, if you want. Oh, yeah, either way, whichever easier. Okay. Um, but I, that's out there so we can start since we're going to have more coding around this and we need to keep track of stuff uh yeah and you need a little checkbox but click on the little icon next to the git ops uh, uh maybe it took it there it is cool okay yeah and then i'll quickly do the other ones this is getting close. Uh, I, I got the other ones uh, okay you got them okay perfect yep and then Let's have a look at this. Ah, oh, perfect. I like this one. I was going to do exactly the same. Yeah. Unless that was. And if you uh, want to, um, if your intern um, does a PR against the um, Artilius README, we can add them to the dev um, group and then they can be assigned that issue. Sure. Yeah. Emma, so you have to do that as well. Eh? You haven't done that yet. Oh yes, sorry. Oh no worries. It's we're we're yeah. we're finally getting to the point where we're going to start creating code. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, you guys have done an excellent job. Yeah, it's it's going to be really awesome, especially um, to implement this. Like when when they release the Argo release, we're, we're already like because we're using Dev Branch. It's so cool that. As soon as they release, we've already like full using application sets, and yeah, yep. it's quite yep. impressive. Yeah, it'll yeah. be very impressive. It'll, We're like it'll... ahead of the curve. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got to run actually. I've 